and welcome to my tarot corner. So my day began uh, quite difficult. I went through a very uh, painful and difficult examination in the hospital, but I went through it and it's over. I came home and I just fell asleep for a few hours. Uh, I had to get up very early in the morning to get to be in the hospital uh, at, ta in, uh, at, this, at the right time. Uh, it was early in the morning and it wasn't easy. So, um, and my husband is still si sick, but my son was uh, gracious. <laughs> well, he is really, uh, although he's... Uh, is having his own issues. He took me to the hospital. He's very uh, helpful and he's amazing, really, despite everything that he's going through himself. And uh, actually, uh, when I when he saw that the uh, when I when he and his girlfriend uh, saw um, my uh, the ring that I wore, you know the big ring with the the red gem, uh, they were very they really liked it, and uh, I I told my son that uh, I will go to the same the same seller the same shop where I bought that ring, and I will look for something. Uh, to buy for his girlfriend and I found this ring and it seemed perfect for her because it's just like her colors and there were two and it's not very expensive so I got two and one of them I, uh, I gave to my son to give for his girlfriend and this is the other one so I decided to put it on today. And uh, tomorrow is not going to be an easy day for me as well because we're going to start the day at the cemetery. Uh, my father's uh, anniversary for his uh, death. It's been quite a while since he died in an accident. So um, he was younger than I am today, which is quite amazing to think about. Anyway, uh, different topics. So, um, I'm talking, so what am I going to talk about? So I'm going to talk about Sarah and Andrew and their new house, because everybody's talking about South Park and I am fed up with that. And I decided that I want to talk about something else. So Andrew and Sarah, or actually Sarah, uh, got a new house in Mayfair in London, a very high-end place, very posh place, over four million pounds a house. Uh, which is maybe not very big, but very luxurious. And uh, apparently on the contract of the house, uh, there are stipulations that are preventing her to sell the property uh, without the consent of her daughters, which begs the question of who bought that house. Now, Andrew himself, uh, is not very poor. He has the money that he himself ac uh, accumulated uh, during the years that he was a working royal. He has uh, the money that he inherited from his grandmother, from his father, from his mother. Uh, but he's a, well, he's preparing to go into a, a very long and, and probably very costly a lawsuit. So I suppose that he's not going to uh, try start spending money on new houses. But, uh, and the, there is this rumor that he might be uh, asked to leave the Royal Lodge where he has been leaving, leaving for a quite well, I think that uh, at least uh, 20 years, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, 
that uh, this property needs a lot of uh, renovations and uh, he claims that he cannot afford the renovations. So if he cannot, I can keep finding these uh, extra cards inside this deck. So he cannot afford the renovations. So he might be asked to leave. And uh, even if he can afford the renovation, he might need to leave the house while it is renovated. So he, might, he and Sarah, who has been living there for quite a while, might need to find another place to live. And Sarah, uh, she is quite a successful author. Uh, she is now uh, promoting her second uh, romantic novel. And uh, as uh, I said in one of my previous uh, readings, that she's going to the United States, promising to uh, tell uh, some new details about uh, the Sussexes. I'm not sure that she will, but I'm, I'm sure that it is a very good a promotion trick uh, and I, I do not condone her for that because uh, we all cash uh, uh, on the Sussexes and like I'm doing uh, readings on them and others, other YouTubers are doing uh, YouTube videos on the Sussexes and uh, are attracting uh, um, followers by uh, getting people to talk about the Sussexes. Uh, so Sarah knows that she will attract more people to come and listen to her and listen, talk about her own book if she promises to say something about them. And she will probably say something that is insignificant. She will not betray the family because she hasn't betrayed the family for a long for for so many years she will not betray the family to this time as well okay so i'm using the uh, illuminati tarot the tarot illuminati it's another one of the basic tarot decks that uh, is uh, one of the um, tarot decks that every tarot reader, reading reader has as one of his, the basic uh, tarot decks that in every collection, even if a tarot reader doesn't use this uh, deck uh, very often, I don't think that you will find a reader that doesn't have this deck. So this is a, a, my... A, going through uh, basic tarot decks, uh, um, uh, well, um, series of reading readings. But I have to admit that the Oracle deck is a fake. Uh, this is a, a replica of one of the Rin Virtues uh, Oracle decks. Now you know that I start when I started redoing the Oracle decks. Uh, the, when I started doing readings, the Rin Virtue was not uh, active any longer, and it was impossible to get new uh, decks uh, by her. And um, I started looking uh, for a. Uh, uh, secondhand uh, decks by her and most of the decks that I do have by her are secondhand decks uh, but some of the decks and this one that Angels of Abundance I couldn't find or the ones that I did find were very very expensive mm -hmm. many people do realize that the Ring Virtues uh, decks the, the, the original one, uh, ones are going to become, you know, collection uh, uh, items. So collect. So they are starting to uh, ask uh, very uh, high prices for them. So um, couldn't find that, and uh, I started looking around. All I could find was, you know, very uh, small replicas that, uh, in all sorts of, uh, in all sorts of. Um, um, 
sites like AliExpress and uh, other Chinese uh, sites. But then on, a, I think it was a Etsy, I found a seller that is doing replicas. And this is, a, 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 and I got this replica for my own use. I never thought that I would use it on the, on the um, on the channel, but it is the angels of abundance, and it felt uh, something that is right for me to use for this reading. Usually, I don't use it, but um, it's a it's a it's a special occasion. So it is not trying to say that it is a Dorian virtues. It doesn't put the, her name on it. The um, back of the cards is different, uh, but it does use the same, uh, the same uh, messages and the same book as her own car, uh, her, her uh, deck. Okay, so let's start by, uh, okay, saying my disclaimer. This is a tarot reading. It is vibrational. It is open to interpretation. It exists as assumptions and speculation, and as such may or may not be true. So please do your own research and decide for yourselves. Okay, so let's clear the deck. And let's start doing the reading. And this is a spread that I devised from as many other th spreads. Uh, and it is special for Andrew and Sarah's uh, peculiar uh, uh, financial status. Okay, so what can we learn about Andrew and Sarah's York financial status? Uh, what is each of their financial status? as it is right now. What is the problem of each of them? And who can help them? What are the sources that can help them? Are their daughters helping them? What is the outcome of their financial status? So what is their current financial status together? What can we see for each of them? alone, what is the root of their problems, and what, who can or what is going to help them, and what can we see for the outcome of Andrew and Sarah York's financial situation. Okay, so let's start with cutting the deck. And the first card is their financial situation as it is right now. The card that I'm getting is judgment. So this is a change and a very, very big change. It's not telling us what kind of change. It's just telling us that their financial situation is going to change. Now, judgment is about a very long process, a very painful process, and a, a, a process that is needed. This is about something... Okay, so uh, I had a little disturbance, but as I was saying, this, we, we are seeing their financial situation in this very, very long process of change. And we don't know yet if this is a good change or a bad cha change, but it is changing. And I always give the, uh, the metaphor of the butterfly for the judgment card. The butterfly starts as a caterpillar and then becomes the cocoon. And it has to bang on the cocoon's wall in order to come out and to be able to fly. So this is a necessary uh, process. It's not an easy process, but it is necessary to be able to fly and to be able to succeed. So in order to, for them to be able to stand on their two feet, in order for them to be able to 
be in a better place financially, they have to go through this uh, judgment process, to have to go through this very, very profound change. So this change process is not nullifying what was before. This is not like the death card that is killing uh, everything that was before. It is exactly uh, what it is. It's building upon what uh, was before and it is uh, evolving. It is an evolvement. So this is what we can see about their financial situation as it is right now and it is a, a well it is a significative card and it is very fitting when you ask about uh, their financial situation so I'm going to put this card here and the second card is Andrew Andrew's financial situation uh, apart from Sarah and Andrew himself is the page of pentacles and Andrew was always the clerk and this is what the page of pentacle is uh, the clerk is a person that is very studious he is someone who knows was this once something Ma. יש לך אוכל, חמודה. מה? אוקיי, אני אגיד לך להתחיל אותה. אוקיי, אז הקלרק היא מישהו שהוא מאוד טוב עם כסף, מישהו שיודע איך לעבוד, ואנדרו היה תמיד מישהו שעבוד עם כסף. הוא היה מסוגל לעבוד עם כל מה שקשור לעבוד. to the royal family's money, to the royal family's money business. He was the, in charge of the uh, business of the royal family. So he was always the clerk. And this shows that he is a, a very orderly person. He's organized. So we don't have to worry about his financial situation. Uh, despite the fact that he is uh, reluctant to change, he likes to adhere to what he has. This is what the, uh, the page of uh, pentacles uh, is all about. It's someone who doesn't like changes, someone who likes things to stay as they are. This is one of the attributes of the page of pentacles. Uh, so he's having a proud trouble with this change that is looming but he is also a very orderly organized person and he knows how to work so he knows how to uh, how to uh, um, how to adjust to things and to adhere to things and he is good with jobs that demand precision and this is but this is also someone who keeps scores so he's also someone that will never forget if, if someone has slighted him andrew never forgets so and he is also a coward so he will not go and shout at king charles for slighting him but he won't forget he will not forget if king charles will do things that are very, very damaging to, to, to Prince Andrew. So, uh, so, so this is uh, his financial situation. So what can we see for Sarah? And for Sarah, we're seeing the Queen of Pentacles. So Sarah is not someone to worry for uh, because both of them are Pentacles, uh, uh, cards, both of them are people with money, and the Queen of Pentacles is even greater than the Page of Pentacles. So Sarah right now, despite her previous money problems and despite what she went through in the past, she is now the Queen of Pentacles. She is now someone who is very good with money, very good with property, and she knows how to handle her, uh, her 
possessions. She knows how to, con to handle her properties. She is someone who is very stable, even though things are changing around. She, she's, this is a, also a card that uh, used to be the card of, the, of Queen Elizabeth because it's a Taurus card. Uh, someone who's always very stable. And if you look at uh, Sarah, she's very stable. She's been with Andrew for years, despite the fact that they divorced. And uh, she's not, uh, despite her wild past, she is now uh, with the same person. I don't know what is their relationship in uh, ro the romantic side of it, but they are living together for many, many years. Uh, she's very stable right now. She's, uh, she's uh, uh, writing books. She has her YouTube channel. She's ha she has her grandchildren. She is someone who is the queen of pentacles right now. So, but she's also very practical. She's also very possessive. And she knows how to uh, manage her finances and any uh, other things. She knows she's a very sexual person. She knows how to enjoy life. And uh, she's someone who is attracted to uh, aesthetics, to art. So this, these things are also things that, are, uh, that we can see about Sarah through this card. So I'm not, uh, I don't think that both of them have a problem uh, in regard to uh, their finances. So is there a problem? And if there is a problem, what is the root of that problem? So let's see. And we get the Princess of Cups. The Princess of Cups is the Page of Cups. The Page of Cups is the artist. Now, this is a card of someone who has mental health issues. This is a card of someone, and this is a, the third uh, uh, court card that we're getting. Uh, which is interesting here because, and this is the, the card of the issues. Uh, this is a, actually a card that shows that uh, the issues here are coming from mental, uh, mental things, from emotional things, from emotional problems. It is not something that connects to money problems. It's not something that uh, connects to uh, anything that is uh, regarding to, uh, that is, has anything connection to possession, to earning money or getting money. It has everything in connection to uh, mental health and to emotional problems. And I will link this to uh, Andrew's uh, court case, because Andrew's court case is all about emotional uh, problems. Andrew cannot suffer being blamed for something that he believes that he didn't do, or that being blamed for something that he believes that he's innocent. Now, I'm not getting, getting into whether is he innocent or not, I don't know, but he cannot suffer being that, uh, blamed for that. And this is the root of the problem in everything that is connected to their uh, finances. Because their finances might change or that change is coming because of a mental, emotional uh, problems that are uh, influencing everything that connects to their possessions. When you are going into this fight uh, to protect your name, to protect your, uh, your um, reputation, uh, this is, it's costly. It's very, very costly. So I think that this is mostly about Andrew's feelings that are hurt and Sarah's feelings that she needs to, uh, well, support him in that quest to, um, to save his name, to save his reputation. So 
if there is any kind of problem, it comes from this. So what are the uh, sources or opportunities that might help them not to get into some kind of problems? And the sources of help are the hermit. So the hermit card is a card that is, first of all, it's a wise man. It's someone wise, and this could be someone that is, um, that is uh, like a very, uh, well, someone that is uh, someone that they can trust, someone that Andrew trusts, that he can talk to, uh, a wise man that might uh, tell Andrew what to do, how to do, someone he can consult. Uh, but it is also about doing some soul searching. Uh, so these are two things that, uh, two avenues that we can look into. One avenue is going to, uh, or going to find, find someone that can be, be that wise man that can help Andrew see reality, see what he needs to do and see how he can help himself, uh, whether it is a right, the right battle, whether it, whether it is correct, whether it is something that is uh, worth pursuing or not. This could be a very uh, trusted lawyer. This could be someone who he trusts that will give him uh, good advice. Uh, if Prince Philip was alive, I would say Prince Philip. I don't think that King Charles is uh, the man that he can go and cons consult today, but uh, someone that is uh, very prominent and someone that Prince Andrew can really go and talk to. Uh, and I don't, I don't know if he has someone like that in his life. The other avenue is to go and to do some soul searching. So this is about going to be alone and to uh, go inside himself and to start soul searching in order to find what is true inside himself. So this is about searching inside himself for the true way of dealing with things, what is the real issue here and how to deal with things in the real way. So it's about enlightenment, it's about putting some light into the issue and about really uh, finding the, the solutions, the big solutions into uh, these problems. So how to, uh, to solve these emotional problems in, uh, in, a, in, the, in a good way. So this is the source of help. Who can help? And this is about the, the, their daughters. This is about other people. So who, what, what people can help? So who can help them? And, oh God, we get the tower. So the tower is saying that we get here that the, the uh, wow, the foundations are very, very weak. That means that there aren't many people that can help them. And despite the fact that we started here with a very good, stable financial situation, we see here we started with a very big change. And I said that I don't know where this change is going. And we see here this seed of a beginning of a problem because it is an emotional problem. And we see here that one possibility of finding, a, well, finding a, a relief is by finding someone that might help. And when I'm asking who can help, I'm getting the tower which means that there aren't many people that Andrew or Sarah can consult. And that shows that, and, and this looks like a house more than a tower, and that shows that their, all, the whole uh, foundations are weak. And this change 
might not be a very good change. So first of all, I think that they will be will they will need to leave the royal lodge, and it's a good thing that uh, they got the house say in Mayfair, because it's probably going to be the the house where they will have to go and live with in. Uh, but it shows that this is about foundations and not only uh, financial foundations, this is about uh, more than financial foundations. This is about rocking their, their entire foundations. And it looks like if Andrew uh, decides to pursue this lawsuit, if he decides to go all the way, it might shake the whole foundations. It might shake them completely. He might end up in a worse place when he, there, uh, when the, than the one he is now. And I, despite the fact that in the uh, in many readings in the past, I said I I saw that he might uh, it might be best better for best for him to sue or to uh, follow that route now i think that things have changed and the energies have changed and you know that <coughs> with tarot you need sometimes to to reevaluate because when things are changing uh, uh, in the in when things are changing so the energies are changing and i think that the energies have changed and not for the not not for the the good way, so it looks like uh, Andrew needs to consider very well, and he needs to find this person that will uh, give him the, a good advice. He needs someone that will advise him and will tell him not to do that, not to try and shake the tower, because if he tries to shake the tower, the, sh the, tr the tower will crumble and fall. This is a warning card. This is not the outcome card. This is a card that is co that comes as a warning because this is an answer to the question of who can help. And it tells us that there is no one here that can really help them, not even their daughters. Okay, so the outcome of this is the two of swords so the two of swords is a card of a choice making a choice and it is a card that speaks about once again the necess the, the the necessary uh, process of looking reality seeing reality as it is and making the right choice. Once again, this is a warning card. And the outcome is that Andrew and Sarah, because they are both of it, them in it, will have to look at reality as it is, see the energies that have changed, see that things have changed, and to realize that right now, the, the outcome is not on, in their favor, it's not in Andrew's favor, and he needs to understand that. And it's like this woman has turned to, into this woman. Both of them are sitting at the sea, both of them have blue dresses, but this woman has her eyes closed and she's holding those, these two swords because she needs to make a choice. But if she's keeping her eyes closed and she cannot see reality, then she will not be able to make the right choice. So this is a card that is telling Andrew, you need to look at reality as it is. You need to cope with reality. You need to start coping with the reality of not pursuing that court case, not going through with it, and not, this is because this is going to shake your ta your entire being. This is a warning card. This change is not going to be a, a good change if you do that. Okay, so that is the first the first um, uh, part of the um, 
of the reading. And the second part of the reading is about who bought the Mayfair house. So who bought it? Did Andrew and Sarah bought it or, uh, buy it? Or did uh, Eugenie and, um, and Beatrice buy it? And they just gave it to Sarah under stipulation. So who did buy it? Because it feels to me that it's unsafe to have anything uh, under Andrew's name right now because everything that might be under, under Andrew's name might be uh, in danger uh, because if he goes through with this a lawsuit, he might lose everything. So this warning card here is telling them that this is something that uh, they might, they, they need to, and probably this is why uh, this whole business of the, the house was done this way. So that uh, uh, nothing is written under Andrew's name, so it's not Andrew's, so uh, no one can take it from them. So this is probably the reason. So I'm going to go on with the, with the rest of the cards and ask who uh, bought the Mayfair house. I'm going to take out three cards. So I'm going to put these cards a little bit here and take three cards. So I'm just clearing the deck right now. So I'm going to take uh, three cards, one for Eugenie, one for Beatrice, and one for Sarah and Andrew, and see which one is the strongest and by that i will see which one gave the most uh, which is the one that gave the most money for this house so who bought the house in mayfair that is under uh, sarah's name who bought the house in mayfair that is under sarah's name eugenie Beatrice or Sarah and Andrew themselves. So for this, I'm cutting once. First card is Eugenie, Beatrice, Sarah and Andrew. Now in these readings, uh, major arcanas are always the weakest. Uh, when we get cards from suits, it depends on the meaning, but it's always the highest number, usually the, the strongest is the card. And if we get a court card, it depends on the meaning of the card. So let's see, that Eugenie's card is Seven of Wands, which is a good card, which means that she contributed quite a lot for this house. Beatrice card is the hangman, so Beatrice did not contribute quite, uh, uh, did not contribute for this house. And Sarah and Andrew is the seven of pentacles. So it is, a, the house was bought by Sarah and Andrew and Eugenie. Both of them, uh, they uh, paid uh, half and half of the house, but Beatrice was there as a, uh, uh, as an observer or someone that is uh, just written there as uh, someone that is a trustee. Uh, but the house was bought by Sarah and Andrew. Half of the house was bought by Sarah and Andrew and the half was by, by Eugenie. <laughs> Beatrice herself did not contribute to the house, which is interesting. Okay, so this is the tarot. And let's see, what do the angels of the abundance have to say to Sarah and Andrew after this reading? So let's clear the deck. First, let's just 
just shuffle it and clear it. I have to say that the cardstock for this deck is quite good. And it's as good as I get from other, other uh, Oracle decks. Okay, so let's start. Um, a message for Sarah and Andrew from the Angels of Abundance. A message for Sarah and Andrew from the Angels of Abundance. Okay, so release jealousy. Jealousy is an affirmation that you don't have that you don't have something and the universe manifests exactly as you affirm. Let other people's successes inspire other rather than frustrate you. If you if they can have it, so can you. Okay, that's interesting because jealousy is something that always uh, that is always something that uh, disturbs people. It always causes people to uh, for it's a road for destruction, and we see that with a lot of people. And I believe that in a way, uh, this is part of Prince Andrew's. Uh, inability to accept his, his current position. And that is why he is striving to restore his name, restore his uh, reputation. I think that jealousy, jealousy in his brother, uh, jealousy in other people's position is a big part of it. And if he releases that and learns to live, as his mother told him, to start finding a new, a new path for himself and to start, strife, start, start doing uh, or finding a new route for himself uh, and stop this fight might be more helpful for him. Okay, so this is it for this reading. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment, share the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.